Here's another story. It's called Paranormal Robot Camera Eyes The Invisible Cyborg. It's about a killing machine. I'm turning off the lights and listen. Ooh. Here's a picture. I know it's random pictures I put together. Glory to God. This crazy guy right here. That's Zack. He's a new original character I made up. He plays the role of the cyborg. Part man, part machine. He's the bad guy. The main villain for this story. There's another version of him with red eyes. And then right here, that's his brain after he got killed. Someone puts it in a mechanical body. And then this picture right here is from the previous story, part one. Okay, that's out of the way. Let me read it to y'all. New scary story is called Paranormal Robot. Camera Eyes, The Invisible Cyborg, Part 2, How a Crazy Guy Became a Motion Sensor Light Killing Machine. Inside the house, the two couples were asleep. <sighs> Monique Russo, the Italian girl, was in her own room as Todd Nelson, her black boyfriend, was resting in an empty room that was used for storage, while Eric, the old man with the beer belly, <laughs> oh, <boom. laughs> and his wife Sonia was cuddled up in bed. Something is walking in the front yard <laughs> as heavy footprints form on the ground. So imagine this outside, it's dark, it's nighttime, but something is walking in the dirt. But you can't see it. And it's leaving marks on the soil. Ooh. A neighbor's car is pulling up <sighs> close by. But the driver doesn't see this robotic monster. Nope. It's invisible. There once was a man named Zach Wilmo. Him. He was insane, but smart at the same time. Zach told his college friends that he wanted his brain to be implanted into a mechanical body and he wanted to watch over his pregnant girlfriend, Luna, because he was afraid that she might get killed by Roger and Lizzie, her evil brother and sister who never liked Luna because she always got spoiled by their parents. Anyway, Zack wanted to protect Luna and be reincarnated as a cyborg superhero. The college friends laughed at Zack. Ha ha ha, you're crazy, man. You're nuts, blah, blah, blah. You're paranoid, ah. But sadly, Zack was telling the truth. And when he passed away, no one honored his wishes. What a shame. But someone else did. Luna survived after she got beaten up <laughs> by her siblings. Her evil brother and sister beat her up. They abused her. That's not funny, but I was, you know, just trying to act it out. Poor girl. And she was left for dead. She forgave them, but she wanted her dead fiance, Zach, to teach those bad family members a lesson. Luna secretly paid a company lots of money to bring back Zach to life as a bionic avenger. <clears throat> They're turning him into a tin can or something, you know. Like a Robocop or something. But he's different. And they program him. To go after everyone. Not just Lizzie and Roger. Luna wanted the engineers. To find a way to make her boyfriend invisible. So no one would see him. Somebody came up with the idea. Ding! To disguise Zack. As a motion sensor light. 
you know those things you see on the outside of buildings like a home the lights that turn on when you walk by when you move okay they wanted to turn him into that i know it sounds ridiculous so someone came up with this idea to disguise Zack as a motion sensor light, which was really his head in a way because the two bright light bulbs was connected wirelessly from his new detached Terminator-like skeleton and the brain was inside the neck and chest area of the metal chassis. So basically they took his brain, they put it into a a metal body, or artificial body that someone made for Zack. But they don't have a head because they wanted the head to be the motion sensor light instead, the two light bulbs. And at the bottom, it kind of looks like a mouth. It's, I know it's weird, but uh, check this out, everyone. Nobody knew that tonight was the first time ever that Zack got to try out his new look. He didn't want to hurt no one originally, but he is under mind control. You do what I say. He's, in, he's under mind control to take out anyone who reminds him of Roger and Lizzie to be continued. Look out for part three next time. Hope y'all like the story so far. Glory to God for the creativity. Good night.